Hello everyone, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm doing the assembly tutorial for the beauty case. This project has been designed by Nicole Silhouette here on YouTube and I shall link her YouTube channel in the description box below. At the time of filming of this tutorial, this project is only available as a digital cutting file in Nicole's Etsy store, and I shall link that in the description box below also. So let's get started. I have all my pieces cut out here, and you can see that I've got them separated into individual bags for each different section of the box that needs to be put together. And I've done this just so that I don't get confused when I'm putting this project together. But first up, we're going to talk about the pieces and we're going to put together the base of the box. So I'm just getting the pieces out here and we'll go through all the pieces. So first up, you'll see that there are these two shapes here. They're an octagon shape and one shape is larger than the other, as I'm indicating here. The smaller one is actually a liner piece and I've put double sided tape on the back. And we're going to work on the base piece first. We're also going to use these two shapes and you can see I've gone ahead and put double sided tape on the glue tabs. There's also a glue tab on the back side of that rectangle piece at the top because it folds down like so. There's another two pieces that look similar to those other two prior but they're a little bit narrower and I've done the same thing with the double sided tape and they will go like that. And then there are four pieces like this and there's glue on the glue tabs up the top as I'm indicating and these pieces also have a fold down piece with double sided tape on the back. You could, could use glue for this project but I've decided to use double sided tape just for the ease of the tutorial. So we'll get started and we'll put this together. Just moving the pieces I don't need just to the side for now. We're going to work with that large octagon and the larger of these two pieces. I'm going to remove the backings of the double sided tape and that gets attached to that octagon piece like so to the longest edge of that octagon. It won't, these pieces won't fit anywhere else so it's pretty simple to see where these go. Then I'm going to turn the piece so I can work on the shorter edges, these two edges here. And that's where these two pieces come in. And they get positioned like so. Just taking the backings off, making sure that these are getting lined up nicely before pressing into place. Just take your time and make sure things are lined up as best you can, because it will make a difference as to how the base of the box goes together. So now you can see there are four remaining place, places where those other pieces are going to go. They will go like so with the glue tab joining onto the octagon. So I'm just going to take the backings off and put these four pieces into place. Taking my time to be as precise as I can and once all those pieces are in place, I will flip the piece over. Like so, and then we'll start joining the side pieces together. So we'll start with one of these bigger tabs and we'll work around the box, joining the sides together. And I'll just speed up the footage here so that it goes a bit quicker but you get what's happening here. Just removing the backings from the glue tabs and joining them to their neighboring pieces. And if those top tabs get in your way, just do your best to work around them because they will get fastened down next. And I use my Tim Holtz pokey tool to help take the backings off the double-sided tape. So nearly done. And you can see I'm using my hand on the inside of the box, my left hand. And that helps with keeping it all straight and even. 
So just joining the last tabs together here. And our box is taking shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold out those top tabs. So you can see the inside of the box and where we'll be going with these top tabs. And you can see that I've got the double sided tape there that I put on previously and those tabs are going to get folded into the box like so. And what this does, it gives the walls of the box some additional strength. So what I'm going to do now is remove the backings off all of those tabs and fold them in. So again, I'll speed up the footage here as I work my way around the box. And with this base box piece, I do find that I'm changing, chopping and changing, going from here to there to everywhere to fold these tabs in. But with the lid and the tray, I do do it in a more uniform way and you'll see that. So I'm just folding these tabs in and pressing them down into place. And that's the base of our box coming together nicely. Now it's time to get that smaller octagon piece and put it inside, that's the liner piece. And that will go inside like so. And that covers the glue tabs on the bottom. And you'll also notice that when you folded the tabs over, to create the sides of the box that covers the glue tabs that join the pieces together and that's in the way that Nicole has designed it and the inside of this box now looks very neat indeed with no glue tabs visible. So I'm just sticking my liner in place inside the box and pressing it down like so. So I'll put that aside for now and we'll work on the lid pieces. So here are the pieces for the lid. We've got two octagons with one piece smaller than the other, which is the liner, so we'll put that aside for now. There are two pieces that look like this, two shorter ones that look like this, and four that look like this. And you can see I've gone ahead and put double-sided tape everywhere where there would be a glue tab. So I like to work with the octagon in this orientation, and I start with the long pieces first for the long sides of the octagon. And they go into position like so exactly the same as what we did for the base box, except the lid is just shorter. So these other two pieces here go on the ends. So we have two long sides, and then we have the two shorter ends, and then there are four corner pieces. That's what I like to call the, the, those four remaining pieces, corner pieces. And they go into place like so exactly like the base of the box. So I'll speed up the footage here and get those corner pieces into place. Just remember to take your time and line things up as precisely as you can. So just getting this last piece in place and then we'll flip the lid over so we're looking at the inside of the lid and as we did for the base box we're going to join the side pieces together. I'm just going to take the glue off the tabs and join it to its neighbour. Again, this is difficult to show, but as soon as I can pick it up, I'll show it to you. There you go. And I'll speed up the footage again whilst I'm gluing these side pieces together. You can see what I'm doing here. Working my way around the lid, joining the side pieces together. The lid's a little bit easier because you can get your hand in behind a lot easier to make sure that the glue tab is getting a good hold and is in a good position. So just getting to the last piece there, just joining that together. You may find it difficult to get this piece, the backings off, but you can just get your pokey tool in there, it's fine. And joining that last piece together. And as before, we're going to fold these tabs out so you can see what the inside of the lid is looking like. And then I'll take the backings off and fold these in. And that gives the lid some strength, the walls of the lid some strength, and also covers the glue tabs where we joined these together, making the inside of the lid very neat as well. So again, speeding up the footage whilst I fold these tabs in. And you can see that I did this with a little bit more order, doing the long sides, then the short ends, and then the corner pieces. It probably really doesn't make a difference how you do it. 
just getting those last corners folded in and it makes a nice strong lid so now it's time to glue that liner piece in and that covers the glue tabs from the base so I'll take the backings off this and put it into place on the inside of the lid. So just getting those backings off and putting it into position and pressing it down into place. And that's our lid done. So I'll put that aside now and we're going to work on the inner tray. So here are the pieces for the inner tray. We have got two large octagons and one smaller one which is the liner. So I'll put one of the larger and the liner away for the moment. We also need a piece of chipboard or mat board and to get the shape I just used the larger octagon piece on the mat board and traced around it with a pencil and then cut the octagon from the mat board with some scissors. Nothing too difficult there. So I'll put the chipboard piece aside for now and we'll work on creating the inner tray. These pieces are exactly the same as the lid pieces. So I'm just showing you there exactly the same pieces you've got two pieces for the long side two pieces for the short ends and the four corner pieces and these go together in exactly the same way I'll just show you how the orientation is going to be which should be now very familiar to you going together like so and I apologize here too for the lighting I don't know what happens with my lighting sometimes but I am working on resolving that so hopefully won't have issues like that in the future so I'll speed up the footage now whilst we're doing this part of the assembly of the inner tray. And you can see that it's exactly the same as what we did for the lid and also the base of the box. Just getting the long sides on, the two shorter ends, and the four corner pieces. This beauty case is a fairly easy project to put together. And you could decorate it in so many different ways. I did have an idea for a way to decorate it to show in this video but unfortunately the supplies I have ordered have not arrived as yet. The mail is so slow at the moment. So we flip it over so we're looking at the inside of the box and now I'm going to join the sides together. Exactly the same as before. Yes as I was saying the mail at the moment is just incredibly slow. Even within Australia, the mail is slow and let alone overseas, that's just painfully slow, but it's understandable at the moment with the pandemic. So we just have to deal with it best we can. So I was going to show two differently decorated beauty cases at the end of this video, but because my supplies didn't show up in time, I only have the one. So I apologize for that. So just getting this last side joined together. And again, I'll fold these top tabs out of the way so you can see that I've got double-sided adhesive on the other side there and that will get folded in. So working on the long sides first, fold them in, then the two end pieces. And then lastly, the four corners. And folding that last tab in and that's our inner tray taking shape quite nicely so now we'll get the inner liner and put that into position so I'll just take the big backings off you could use glue here I've just used double-sided tape just because it's quicker and easier and press that into place now it's time to turn this piece over and start working on the bottom of the inner tray and this is where this mat board or chipboard piece comes into play. It's going to be attached to the bottom. But first I'll just show you the little handle piece that I've got here. It has a screw that goes into the bottom and that's what I'm going to use as the handle to pull up the inner tray from the inside. I'm not sure where I got this from. It'll be something you'd have to research yourself. You could use a little draw knob or a draw handle if you wanted to, if you could find one small enough. But this mat board piece now is going to get glued to the bottom of the inner tray on the outside. It's giving the inner tray a little bit of strength. And I'm using glue because it's a bit stronger than the double sided tape. I'm 
just press that down on the inside, making sure the glue is getting a good stick. Then I'm going to get the other larger octagon and I'm going to glue that over the top. Just putting some glue on there and gluing it down straight over the top. Lining it up, making sure it's nice and straight. Making sure the glue gets a good stick before moving on. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a ruler and I'm determining the center point for the long edge and the shorter end because I want to find the center point of this inner tray to be able to put that little handle piece through. So I'm drawing my lines very faintly, which I will rub out when it's finished. So I'm just joining up the little marks I made to find the central point. And I'm using my Tim Holtz pokey, pokey tool here to poke a hole and you just need to take it slow here and don't push too hard and make sure your fingers are out of the way on the other side because you don't want to stab yourself. And then I'm going to go in from the other side. But what I did find when I was doing this, it wasn't quite wide enough. So I did use a skewer that I had in my kitchen to make the hole a little bit bigger. And you can see the hole is bigger. This is the skewer that I used. And I went in from both sides because you're going through about three layers of cardstock and that matte board piece. So here's the little screw end piece and that's going to go through from the outside of the inner tray through the center hole there and then the handle piece gets screwed in over that on the other side. And that's our inner tray finished so we'll put that aside for now and we'll work on the resting pillars that go inside the base box that support the inner tray. So there are two, there is a large one and a small one. Just working on the large one at the moment there are four pieces that look like this and there are four rectangle pieces up there to the top right. So I'm just removing the backings off the adhesive off one of the pieces here and then I've realized I was a bit premature doing that and I actually needed to glue these rectangles into position first. So these four rectangles that get glued on the inside of those pieces with the glue tabs are strengthening pieces because these pillars have an important job of holding that inner tray in place in the main base box of the beauty case. So it just needs this little bit of extra strength and you could actually use cardstock that was just scrap in your stash and no one would know because you don't really see them. I've just kept mine the same colour for the tutorial. So I'm just putting that into place. Then I'll get my piece that has the adhesive already exposed and that's going to get attached to one of the other pieces that does not have adhesive on it. This gets attached like so. Very easy little box to put together. There we go, and we just put that aside for later. Work on the second one. I'll just put it down on my work surface so you can get a better look. So you put adhesive on one of the pieces and then the other piece gets attached to it like so. And then you'll go ahead and put the smaller one together in exactly the same way. So as for the larger pillar, the smaller pillar goes together in exactly the same way. You've got four pieces here and four rectangles. So I'm sticking the rectangles into position on the inside edge of the pieces with the tabs. Again, these are strengthening pieces and could be cut from any cardstock that you have. So just speeding up the footage here, doing exactly the same as what I did for the larger resting pillar, just getting the last strengthening piece into place, taking the backings off the adhesive and joining the pieces together. The smaller pillar is a little bit more narrow and that's so that it doesn't take up too much room in the beauty case. 
because you still want to be able to put things in your booty case. So just getting the second one put together. Very easy little boxes to put together. So now I have my four resting pillars here for the base of the beauty case and they're going to go into position like so. The two larger ones are on the long edges of the octagon and the smaller ones go on the smaller end pieces. And I'm just going to glue them into position. Just hold it in place while the glue dries. And then do the other side. And you can be a little bit generous with your glue here. And I do put some on the bottom, which I didn't do for the other one, but it's no big deal. Once I've made sure that those longer pieces are in place, it's time to put the short resting pillars in place on the ends of the inside of the beauty case. And they just go into position like so. The longest part here is waiting for the glue to dry. Just pressing down, making sure I'm getting a good hold. Be careful not to squash these little boxes. And once I'm happy that the glue is dry, we can then put the inner tray inside, which I'm doing now, and it fits in perfectly. And you can see it has a little lip, and that's exactly designed for the lid to go on in place. So it's a seamless fit. For the lid of my beauty case, I decided to put the same handle as what I put for the inner tray. And I put it in place in exactly the same way. I measured the top, drew my lines to get my center point, and then poked the hole through. You could put a different handle on the top if you liked, it's entirely up to you. So I'm just giving you a look there on the inside and all the components. It's quite big on the inside. This is my mobile phone. It's an iPhone 7, so it fits in there and there's still heaps of room. Just giving you a look all the way around and of the inner tray. It fits in there perfectly and the lid fits on top just beautifully. So of course I went ahead and made one before I did the tutorial and this is my finished one. I used the decorator layers from the cutting file and used lots of flowers on mine and decorated it with pearls and ribbon. And I was thinking with this particular one, it would be a lovely box to give to someone for a wedding keepsake. You could take the lid off, something nice could go in the tray, whatever keepsakes. And then that inner tray comes out and there's still room underneath that for any other keepsakes that you'd like to put in there. And as I said, this could be decorated in so many different ways. I'd even like to see it decorated for a male. That would be different too. So that's my tutorial finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that you feel inspired to make one of these beauty cases. Don't forget to check the description box down below for the links that I have previously mentioned. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would really love that too. Thanks very much for watching today. Have a great day and until next time, it's bye for now.